Hi, my name is Aaron Hoover, and this presentation is about the naturally occurring radioactive materials in Marcellus Shale. So the first question is, what are naturally occurring radioactive materials? Um, if the name is not self-explanatory enough, they are radioactive elements that are present naturally in the vi environment, usually at very low levels. They are present in almost all soils and rocks, usually as a result of ancient seawater um, millions of years ago, and they find their way into the formations as time passes. Some common examples are uranium, radium, radon, thorium, and potassium. Some of these smaller ones like uh, radium and potassium being radioactivity levels are usually measured in becquerels per gram, picocuries per gram, or parts per million. Um, becquerels and picocuries are measures of the radio rate of radioactive decay, and parts per million are is a measure of the isotope's relative concentration in the material. Um, as an example, the average radioactivity in the Earth's crust is about 1,400 kilograms or 1,400 becquerels per kilogram, and the average amount of uranium in U.S. coal is four parts per million. So why is there norm naturally occurring radioactive materials in Marcellus Shale? Um, millions of years ago, Pennsylvania was covered by an inland sea, and the naturally occurring radioactive materials in the seawater eventually found their way into the organic materials that eventually became shale gas through catagenesis. Because Marcellus Shale is generally richer in organic materials than other shale formations, it is also richer in these norms. Marcellus, in particular, is rich in uranium-238 and thorium-232, the decay products of these being radium-228 and radium-226, respectively. Uh, radium-226, in particular, has been found from anywhere to 0 to 2 picocuries per gram in the Marcellus formation, which is not high enough to be a health hazard on its own if it's brought to the surface. However, radium can be re released into water, contacting the formation in the form of radium plus 2 ions and this migration into the water is facilitated by the presence of chloride ions uh, <clears throat> and chloride may be present in the formation up to 10 grams per liter. Now uranium and thorium are not likely to migrate into water because they're usually found uh, bound particulates because they're not very soluble. The occurrence of radium in water, which also includes the fluids used in hydraulic fracturing, may be an environmental concern and a health hazard. So, due to the amount of time that it takes for radium to migrate into the water from the Marcellus Shale, radium doesn't migrate directly into hydraulic fracturing fluid on the first pass since there's not enough contact time. However, because chloride ions facilitate the migration of radium from the shale into the water, brine solution in the wells is higher in radium concentration. The radium levels are negligible to begin with, but repeated use of this flowback water can result in the formation of radium-rich sludge because the proportion of the brine in the flowback water grows continually over time as it's used over and over again. The sludge is a result of radium co-precipitating from the solution uh, with barium sulfate. In a study of wastewater from 13 different, different Marcellus Shale wells, radium-226 levels range from 0 0.163 to 16,000 picocuries per liter, and radium levels, radium-228 levels, range from 0 0.0286 to 957 picocuries per liter. So the question is, how much radium is too much, and what is considered a health risk or environmental concern? According to the 1976 Resource Conservation and Recovery Act, landfills, depending on the state regulations, are only able to contain radioactive materials from 5 to 50 picocuries per gram. And according to a report by the United States Geological Survey, wastewater produced from oil and gas wells in Pennsylvania and New York had radium levels as high as 18,000 picocuries per liter with a mean level of 2,460 picocuries per liter, which are both well above the 5 to 50 picocuries per gram limit. The waste material of this radium concentration has to be disposed of in landfills that are approved for low-level low radioactive waste, which comes at a higher price. While the disposal of waste in normal landfill costs roughly $50 per ton, disposal of this low-level radioactive waste can cost up to $6,500 per ton, which is 130 times more expensive. So obviously companies want cost minimized, so they're doing research currently to find different methods to dispose of this radium. Uh, one such method is a combination of fracking wastewater with acid mine drainage and an attempt to lessen the radioactivity of the wastewater. So in summary, uh, naturally occurring radioactive materials are present everywhere from water to soil to rocks. Um, Pennsylvania's Marcellus Shale Formation 
has high levels of uranium-238 and thorium-232, which upon decay yields radium isotopes. Um, these radium isotopes can migrate from the brine in the solution, or in the formation, that makes this, which with the frac water flow back and eventually co-precipitates with barium sulfate to form a radioactive sludge. Um, the radioactive sludge is too radioactive to dispose of in normal landfill and has to be put in the low level radioactive waste landfills, which is a very expensive process. So in the future, I would expect more research to be done on the disposal in order to make this fracking process a little more economically feasible.